here to interact with our guest anchor and tonight we're honored to uh, to host actually one of the legends of the track his career spanned for roughly around 20 years and he got to dominate the track not just in the 10,000 meters as well but also crossing over to the you know the marathon itself i'm speaking about um tanui who's joining me in studio uh, right here on set moses tanui many thanks for making time thank you too you are a legend you know that right uh, of course yes uh -huh. but you know we don't know ourselves uh, yes because we are at least our people who are cool uh, do, you, do you still consider yourself an athlete I'm a retired athlete, a retired but athlete. Uh, you see, we don't want to show. Yes, yeah. well, well, that's very good. Let's go way back to 1991, mm. the World Championships, you know, and that is when you got the gold medal. Yes. It, it was a milestone for you because, I mean, it has been a long way coming. Yes. In yes. terms of your upbringing, you used to run to get uh, to school and back, right? Yes, yes sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about the 1991 World Championships and how it was for you because that was a defining moment in your career. Yes. Mm. Um, when we went to Tokyo yes. in 1991, it was um, a big moment for me. Although I was in 1988 Olympics yes. and also African Championships and World Cross Country for several years, but uh, the moment that I it was mine was 1991 when I won the gold medal, and I can remember that uh, we used to talk about Kenya winning, not an individual um, medal, mm -hmm. but uh, we wanted a medal for this country, and we could sit down in the evening, discuss the strategies and how we can do our pay so that we can get the medal for, for our country. Okay. And we were three, Thomas Osano and the late um, Richard Chilim. Um, we talked and Osano said, uh, you know, for me to run 13 or five in 5,000 was a bit difficult for him. Yes. And he said, I cannot take the best. But we, I and Chelimo said, mm -hmm. we will do our best. But Chelimo said, I will go Moses, because we need to fight for our country. And uh, we just went. We had um, the best at least by then from, um, from Italy and also Britain and Germany, that they were very fast. And also from um, Morocco. You remember Putaeb and uh, the rest. Exactly. It, it, so, was, it was a tough time yes, to be an athlete. So with Kalitska was also a very tough person uh -huh. because he was running almost world record uh, by then. Then uh, we said we need a medal for home and we, we discussed with Chelimo and... And it happened. Yes. Well, that's a very good thing. Yeah. Since you've brought up um, notable athletes, let, let's talk about Haile Gabriel Selassie. Yes. Yes, and we well know what happened. An unfortunate thing happened while you were on your final lap mm -hmm. in that particular race. Yes. When yes. was it? In 1993? Uh, sometimes it is very sad to remember yeah. because that was also the moment that I, I was looking at. Okay. But unfortunately, you know, the Ethiopian athletes are not friendly during the competition. T tell us what happened. Um, when I was, when we were two of us, uh, the 20th lap, so we just ran together. Mm -hmm. But every time he didn't want to go forward because he was stepping on my, he was running behind me. Yeah. And uh, he, he stepped on my shoes several times. But the last one when we were preparing now for the final lap, I think maybe he was tired or he was just wanted to, because he knew that uh, in Kenya at the 200 laps, he could not mm -hmm. stay with me or he cannot run with me. Unfortunately, before the bell, he just stepped on my shoes and the shoes came halfway. So I was unable to run with the shoes. I could not put it back. So but, you had uh, to remove it. So I had to make sure that the shoes is out. Yes. Because I was also fighting for our country. Exactly. Because by then also Richard Chilimo was still there. And um, so 
And I said now, because Richard Chelimo is not with me, so I decided to say, let me take the medal for our country. All right. Unfortunately, that is what happened, and I will not forget. And uh, always, and I can say this uh, with authority, that uh, the Ethiopian athletes are not friendly to Kenyans, because every time they sit at the back, and uh, yeah. you remember even Ochoka, when he, he fight with him. Mm -hmm. at, at the finish at the finish line so exactly. those are some of the things that i can remember yeah, but it's a it's just a dark spot in your history yes and, and you know you moved on definitely yes, yeah. and the boston marathon yes. that's one thing that yes. is actually highly acclaimed among athletes yes. you know world over yes, so yes you got to win it twice how was that feeling one uh, i can say in 1993 when i lost the the medal yes I decided because the Federation, and I can say this with authority again, that they refused to pay $100 for Churi of Appeal, to appeal that uh, this guy stepped on my shoes. To appeal that race. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you see, when you want to appeal, it's only 30, 30 minutes. I had $100, but no Kenyan official came and said, let me take, because you, you are not allowed to, as an athlete, or your agent to pay the hundred shillings, it must be a federation. Right. And then I was, you know, I, I got disturbed mm -hmm. and I said now instead of going home and retire, I said let me change the game. And go for the marathon. And go for the marathon. Yes, so and how that, was the feeling, Boston Marathon, imagine? The first one I went to New York, Yes, uh, that is the same year, 1993, um, and I ran and I, it was completely like a tall order to me because after finishing the before I finished the marathon I could not even remember my name and I could not I could hear some people saying go oh, Moses but I don't know what I what was happening in my body but uh, and I swear that I will not run a marathon but because I was the best athlete by then exactly and then Boston pushed so in April 1994, I went to Boston, and that is now I went to Boston 94, mm -hmm. 95, when uh, Detti, Cosmas and Detti won. Yeah. And then uh, I was motivated that uh, I could win the marathon now because I've run about three times a marathon. Uh, definitely, so, and yes. your time came? Yes. Take us back. How was the feeling? I still insist. How was the feeling? The first 25 kilometers yeah. was very difficult uh -huh. because sometimes you you know Boston is a very difficult course uh, by going up the hill and sometimes going down, going down yeah. it is very difficult uh -huh. and by 33 then I came back now strongly and I could see my brother Cosmas already ahead running and now I struggle a little bit but um, at 34, 35, 36 is when I feel that now I can move. Well, that's and amazing. if you yeah. can see that, the clip, uh -huh. I was faster than Ndeti because Ndeti was ahead. Okay. And you could see some riders Definitely. coming back to cover my, my speed because mm -hmm. I had a devastating speed. Yeah. And then uh, at that 40, and then I was ahead of... Uh, Cosmos, it? Well, well, that's yeah. amazing. And yeah. in your career that spanned for almost 20 years, you know, you got to met, to meet the who in who in society. Yes. Yeah, yes. I remember coming up, you know, coming across a photo of you and Paul Tergert and George Bush. Yes, yes. Right yes. there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. How, how was it meeting a president of well, the United States? It is a big story. Yeah. Uh, there was some flying doctors that they were doing cleft lip the people oh, who the would, cleft yeah, yeah. yes they came to Eldoret and they told me that uh, I can organize for them a race mm -hmm. so that they can attract people to come and see what they were doing because they flew a plane to Eldoret mm -hmm. then they, they were doing operation at the airport all right so they we started the race in Eldoret and finished at the airport and then they invited us to US uh, that was around December so when we went to US in Washington DC, we were moving we, we were invited to go and see some athletics event yeah. for, for the young athletes, the young children. Mm -hmm. And 
somebody said we were asked to sign autographs and so forth. One of the senators, your senators, came across and said, are you Moses Tanui? Uh -huh. I said, yes. yes. He said, you are not supposed to be here. Uh -huh. You need to be running with my... Yeah. And we said, fine, yes. if we have time, we can do that. Why not? Yeah. And, and then uh, the following morning, now, that was the day. And that happened. Yes. As we conclude, now yeah. that the athletics days are behind you, your retired athlete, yes. um, what, what is Moses Tenui up to? What um, do you do when you wake up in the morning? Take us through your daily schedule. Yeah. What keeps you busy right now? Um, right now, yeah. I have three different jobs that I'm doing. Uh -huh. I have and real estate uh -huh. and then uh, golf ah yes and then uh, so you're still an athlete in yes. one way yeah and then i have in my heart mm -hmm. i want to give back to the athletics community yeah yes okay and now that, uh -huh. now with that one we have eldoret city marathon which is coming up in april 21st okay the marathon is uh, one of the richest in Africa uh, that I can say because we are paying 18 million and 30,000. Number one female and male is going home with 7 million, which is 3.5 million. But the first one. That's so amazing. That, that's that is amazing. what I want to give back to the, to the community. All, all right. Yeah. Finally, future of athletics. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is the future of athletics in Kenya right now? We've had a couple of doping scares as a country, you know, and the Ethiopian challenge is still there. And you've mentioned it categorically that they are tough competitors. Yes, they, yes. Yeah, they might not play cleanly, yeah, as yeah. you mentioned, yeah. but they're tough competitors. What yeah. do you think is the future of the athletics in Kenya? My vision is, you know, we have a constitution mm -hmm. that... Uh, we need to do for our federation yes with all the stakeholders and um, make sure that all all the stakeholders including the rights of an athlete should be seen mm -hmm. secondly if we want to finish this doping menace is to make sure that the athletes themselves accept to train and make sure that there is no shortcut no pain, no gain. So an athlete should train very hard and make sure and focus because you have a life after running. Exactly. Like myself and several of other athletes, the top athletes that are, they were running during my times. All you right. can see them, they have health, they walk, mm -hmm. it's still the same people that they were there before. Definitely. But you find the athletes that are for today mm -hmm. you see the name in three years they are no more so no pain no gain no it's as no, simple as it's that. as simple as that you have to put in work to yes, actually yes, get yes and the required. athlete himself uh -huh. should stop this thing nobody else it's the athlete themselves it's the athlete either he trains hard yeah or he use the shortcut to get money. Nothing comes easy. Yeah. Moses Tanui. It Thank is you. a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Truly a legend. Thank you. And I can see you're definitely taking care of yourself. Still an athlete. I'll come for a couple of golf lessons. Thank you. All right. Thank all right. You. That was Moses Tanui, mm. our guest anchor tonight right here on the Friday Briefing. Just getting to know a little bit more about athletics. I hope you've actually gotten to see the face of this man who, you know,